Right, so it's been a while I think, can't remember actually how long it has been since I put out the last video with me actually in it. But I've got one of those rare days today where I have the whole house and the fish room to myself. So no family, I just grab my beer. No um, dog even. So I have taken that opportunity to come out for the fish room, just enjoy the tank, do some basic maintenance, and have a beer and I thought I would run through the livestock in the tank for the fish and go through the fish today because uh, I've done the fish room I've done all the equipment um, I think I've done my dose but I haven't actually talked about what I've got in the tank so I will do corals later so I need to work out what they're called mostly um, but the fish, I'm pretty good with the fish, uh, so I will flip the camera around in a minute and talk about the fish. But first is I fitted the um, Apex Neptune MXM Wi-Fi module uh, and initially it was horrendous. <laughs> so. Um, it's not easy, so I had to remove every single light uh, and all of my Vortex pumps off of my existing Mobius app and the aquarium they were set up to. So I had to remove all, everything, basically, make a new uh, tank in Mobius, add them all back, then add the MXM, update everything. So all the lights that needed updating, needed to be updated, the Vortex pumps, firmware updates uh, so I think the whole process took me about five hours and then I plugged my Aquabus cable into the I'm pointing up because it's, it's above my head fixed to the beam uh, yeah so I plugged the Aqu Aquabus cable into the like the socket on the box of the MXM and the whole kind of uh, plug socket that you push into just come away from the house and the box and pushed up just rattled around in the box still like it now but it works so I'll probably never touch it again so I must say for the first time in it's got to be a year probably more than a year actually um, I've had random lights go on and off on this tank through using that Mobius app so ori originally I've got sockets I think I've got 40 sockets uh, across the back of this tank so 20 double sockets and I had each individual light plugged into its own plug socket because they kept turning on and off randomly and it wasn't just for in the day it'd be in the middle of the night so I'd check my camera if I'd been out I was up late and I'd just check the camera it could be half past one I'd have a random light just come on at full blast and it'd come on for maybe could be 30 seconds could be five minutes and it'd go off and it will black 15 minutes and then another one not even the same light a different light would just randomly come on so it drove me absolutely nuts so what i did is i unplugged them all from their individual sockets i plugged them all into uh like in sets of four into uh four extension cables and then those extension cables were on a smart plug so i turned all the lights off with smart sockets at night so they were just off so they couldn't even though they wanted to come on they weren't able to um, so I mean it, it means the wiring's a bit of a mess I mean the reason that wiring looks like that and it is a mess is because the lights have never run how I wanted them to so I thought it's absolutely pointless getting all those cables tidy because every week I was up there unplugging lights resetting lights so it just made no sense so I'm leaving it I mean, touch wood, I think that, I can't remember how long that MX uh, M module's been on. Is it a week or so? I don't know. I got it the day it came out. So, I've, and since then, they have run absolutely perfectly. They ramp up, ramp down, go off, stay off. That's all you want. So, they're running, um, they're all blues. Well, all the XR15s are blues. I've got some G5s and G6s. They're all blues. And I've got two old... Um, Radeon 4 Pros on there, but they won't connect to the MXM anyway, so they're just running on their own. But to be fair, they never paid up. They're on the Mobius app, 
and they do as I ask. They turn off and turn on when I want. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the major change really. So within the next couple of weeks, that means that I can get all the power bricks, the cables all labelled up, um, velcroed and made tidy and touch wood other than an actual light failing, which, you know, I know they do do. I've got a box down there. I've got a little pile of broken Ecotech stuff. I've got a broken Versa pump. I've got a broken MP40 and I've got a broken um, XR15G5. So I'm slowly collecting. The Versa pump's been broke. That pump was broke before I built the fish room. So it's, it's been in a box sitting there for over two years. So I'm not really good at sorting stuff out. So anyway, so that's where we are. So I will flip the camera around. I'll show the MX M module, it's not very exciting, but it's just up there doing its thing. It's what you want for equipment, isn't it? You want to plug it in, set it up, get it working, and then never see it again. I just want it to do its thing. Um, I'm going to probably have to buy another one though, because they only let you connect 25 devices, and well, I'm over already, so I've, I've got all 25 loaded up, and I've still got some more that I could put on there. So if it works really well, I may be tempted to add another one. But anyway, so I'm going to turn the camera around and then I'm just going to walk through all the fish in the tank and just give you a rundown. Um, you will see that 80% of my fish stocking in this tank is tangs because I like tangs and it's my tank and I want lots of tangs and that's what I've got. Um, I've also got uh, a few rats, not many, and just some clowns and other random stuff. Right, so let's turn this round and we will run through them. Right, so, oh actually I'll put the lens on, if I can find it. One momento, where's that go? Is that it? Right, right, so if I just, uh, I don't know what that's going to look like. Horrendous. It looks a bit dirty, obviously, because I've been out here working on the tank. Uh, so, that guy there is my Dusamari tang. So, he was the smallest tang in the tank when he went in. He's uh, got absolutely, you need to get really close, but they really do have some stunning markings on them. Uh, yeah, so he's working his way up through the ranks as he grows. So quite often you'll come out and you'll see he's got some lumps out of his fins and some marks on his side where he's been fighting. But generally the tank isn't too mad. So right, so to do some Maori tank, there is my blonde naso tank. This little guy down here is my white tail coal tank. They're really peaceful, those guys. Um, yeah, they just very quiet tang that. Uh, right, they've all disappeared out the other end for some reason. Uh, so that is a freckle face tang. Also very nice, good markings. Um, in there, I think I just saw, did I? Yeah, there it is. So there's a gem tang. There is my vampire tang. I've had that guy for probably five, six years. Uh, there's one of the two regal tangs that are in this tank. There's the boss, Mr. Soulhole. So he went in this tank and he was considerably smaller than my Achilles tank, who was the boss of the tank. Uh, Cause he, he came in, I think he came in that size. I can't really notice that he's grown at all. He came in big, um, but obviously the Soulhole tank, I mean, they. They grow quick. I think they get to this sort of size really quick. And then um, I would imagine it will slow down now. Convict Tang is the uh, feistiest Tang in the tank. He's, I don't think you pick it up, but he's absolutely smothered in scars because he fights with, I don't know what one it is, but I've got one, two, three yellow Tangs. And that Convict Tang constantly fights with, I'm pretty sure it's the same one. I'm pretty sure out of these three yellow tangs, two are captive bred, and then one is 
wild caught that was in my Red Sea 750 before I set this tank up. And I've got to be honest, I used to be able to tell him apart because the other two were slightly smaller, but I don't think I can now because they all look exactly the same to me. Because I know a lot of people, oh, actually, I think that he might be slightly bigger, isn't he? Because I know a lot of people were saying that the captive bread had some strange fins missing, or I think the cordial fin, I can't remember what one it was they were saying, but mine all look perfect. I and mean, they're really nice and yellow, great coloration. They're pretty, between the three of them, they're quite calm. But I did start off with six, and what they do is they just pick on a random one, like the other five, and pick on one, and they drive it up into the corner of the tank, and they would uh, just smash it to pieces and wouldn't let it feed, so I'd have to take it out. And then the four did it to the fifth one, and then the three did it to the fourth one. So, and then for some reason, they just stopped. These three just seemed to get on fine. So, I don't know why that is, but that's just the way it is. Right, so what else we got? So we've got a mustard tang, or yeah, mustard tang. Uh, that's a vampire tang through there. And somewhere I have a chevron tang. Chevron is, oh, that's him. That's him down there. So obviously when you buy them, they're beautiful markings, really quite vivid. And then as they grow, like as in this tank, the markings become very subtle. Uh, and essentially, I mean, he's got really amazing markings on his face, but essentially, they're nothing compared to the markings of when you buy them as a youngster. But, yeah, that's it. Uh, and then I have Powder Blue. So he went in very small, actually. So he's probably tripled in size since I've had him. I did try a pair. Um, they went through QT together. They went in this tank together and then it all fell apart rapidly. So I had to take one out and move it on. So I think that is all of the tangs. So let me just run through. I have got a sour hole tang, an Achilles tang, a freckle face tang, a Dusamari tang, two regal tangs, three yellow tangs, one convict tang, one chevron tang, one mimic tang, and one white tailed coal tank. Pretty sure that's all the tanks. Right, other fish, I have three of these pajama cardinals. So I inherited one from a fellow reefer who gave me that clam there. So it came in a, um, well, he had a tank breakdown basically, so it turned up in a bucket. He had that uh, that pajama cardinal and I think it was a clownfish so the clown jumped out while I was keeping it in another tank so I have one of these and I don't know why I just thought I'll, I'll get in some company so I bought two more so there's that one there there's that one just down there and then there's this guy there so as is most things fish related, these two, which I bought together, seem to just stick together and be quite happy. And the guy, <laughs> the guy I bought them to be friends with, he tends to just be on his own most of the time. So I don't know if these two are paired up or what, I don't really know to be honest. Right, so it's three pajama cardinals and then dotted around the tank, you can see these carberi antheas. So they all go and hide in the rocks when I get the camera out because they get a bit, yeah. So I don't know how many I've got. I put loads in, well not loads, but I put, I think I put, it's either 30 or 40, I can't remember. Um, and they have systematically killed each other off at a great rate of knots because if you look, so that, where are you gone? That's a male. That's a male, that's a male, that's a male. Uh, there's another male down there. So there's, and obviously those little ones are all the females. But, 
so let's use a little har in there. But so there's another male there. So they, they basically just kill each other slowly but surely. So I've got confused really why I've got so many males in the tank because they weren't males when they went in. And my understanding was that you'd have maybe in a tank this size one or two dominant males, some sub males, and then a bunch of females. But that's not the way it worked out. So I don't think I'll bother buying anymore, to be honest, because um, I think they're like forty pound a fish. So they're not cheap to just watch them killing each other. So that's Carbright Anthias. I do love them though, they're absolutely stunning colours. And they see some good behaviour on them, but it's just an expensive way to start off with a bunch of fish and end up with, you know, probably a third of what you put in. What else have I got? I have got a Iridis Ras, which is over the back there. So that's a really nice fish actually. He's just does his own thing, eats really well, seems to get on with everyone. That's the tank to just found the, um, you know, like the nub of algae that gets left in the clip. And then they're all trying to grab it down there. Yeah, so I've got an Iridis Ras, I've got this, can't swear in the videos, six lime Ras. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, six lines, you know, they're good at what they do, but my God, they are not friendly to other fish. So he's killed, um, I think, three rats that I put in. I tried to twist the eye rats three times, and that's using an acclimation box. Um, I think the last time the rats was in the acclimation box for over a fortnight, I think it was three weeks, to the point where that six line showed no interest in it at all. And then the second I let it out, he just slaughtered it basically. So I couldn't get it out quick enough. So it's just one of those things. And he killed a blue spot wrasse um, that I put in. Uh, what else? I did have a yellowtail tamarind in here, but I don't think he was involved in that because that was in here for a couple of months, maybe longer. Fine, and the, that six line didn't go anywhere near it. Uh, but then I put in the this guy, this um, Donardi Ras. So I got him from another reefer who um, wanted to move him on because he was getting a bit feisty. And in his tank, I don't know if he killed it or he just picked on it really badly, uh, but he picked on his yellowtail tamarind Ras. And then the day after I put this guy in, my yellowtail tamarind Ras just disappeared. Never seen it since. Uh, so I think that's quite possibly the culprit. But anyway, that is my Lenardi Ras. Uh, so I've got a six line Ras, an Iridis Ras, a Lenardi Ras, and I have a cleaner Ras. And then talking about that, um, I don't mention, yeah, I mentioned I've got a pair of them, didn't I? And sticking with Ras, I also have, let me just come down my stairs into the sumpy bit, is in this tank. You see that, that is a very tiny juvenile black-tailed um, tamarind Ras. So I put that guy in an acclimation box in my big tank for, I think it was a fortnight. That six I'm rest showed him no attention whatsoever. I mean, he is tiny, so I thought, why would he be interested in it? Uh, I let him out of the box, and I don't know if you can see in this video, but the six I'm rest took his eye out. So that fish has now got one eye, which is on the other side. So, yeah, see that? Yeah, so he is now down in this kind of little tank, which I put, uh, I've got this because it doesn't like the flow in the big tank. Um, I've got some, I tend to put um, my shrimps and my um, emerald crabs and stuff in here first before they go in the big tank, um, just so I'm 
getting fed up. You can see it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'll just clean this glass of what. It's so lazy. Uh, so there's a shrimp just at the bottom of that rock there, and there's another one somewhere. Um, and the emerald crab will eat that bubble algae. So eventually, my plan is to get the six line out of that big tank and put them in this tank and then put that black tail tamarind from this tank into the last tank and then if the six lines in here I'm hoping I might be able to introduce uh, some more wrasse up in the big tank and then the decision will be will the six line live his life out in this tank uh, or would I take the chance and add him back so Got all the covers off the sumps as well because it's 30 degrees outside um, and I am trying to get the evaporation up so that I can get more kelp washer in the tank really which is over there in the stirrer. So the aircon which is down there has been on 24-7 for about the last six or seven days really. Uh, right, so I think see they'll come up because they think they're going to get fed. I've literally fed them about 20 minutes ago. Uh, yeah, so that, I think that's about it, fish-wise. So, yeah, so some of these have got a lot of growing to do. Obviously, this whole, whole tang will keep growing. That Dusamari tang will be the biggest fish in the tank because they actually get... I think they grow a two foot, like fully grown, but I'm hoping that's gonna take years. Um, I'm hoping to get to like the similar size to the soul hole and then really slow down. And if they grow like an inch a year or so, same with the naso tang. I mean, he's grown quite a bit since he's gone in. They all seem to have a spurt and then they get to this sort of size and then they grow quite slow, which will work out quite nicely. Uh, Cause, I mean, I can accommodate some big fish in this tank, but obviously as these, um, you know, as these corals all grow out, they will fill in a lot of that free space. And obviously I've got plenty of room to add a lot more coral in there. So that is about it, I think. I cannot, oh, I'll tell you what, I left two fish out. Yeah, so down this end, so these are two fish I've never had before. I quite like them actually, but, um, I mean, in a tank this size, I don't really get to see them that much. They only live down this end, so that is uh, Royal Grammar. And I don't see right in the back of the corner under the MP60 is one of my abalone. Always makes me slightly nervous when he sits under the uh, power head like that. But they do that quite frequently, I don't know why. And I don't even know you can see it, but over the back, is a um, black cap grammar so it's like a purple one with a black cap uh, yeah so these two fish literally just hang out on this end of the tank uh, they may venture about this far and that's about it really um, yeah so that is all the fish in the tank Right, so I will, oh, didn't, I didn't, didn't, didn't mention the clownfish, did I? Yeah, so that, that clown is out of my Red Sea 750. Um, so that's quite old, that clown. Not old, but I've had that probably five, six years maybe. And then that small guy at the back is what I bought when the one I had from the other guy jumped out the tank. So originally, this guy was the male, because the other one that jumped out was considerably bigger. Uh, and then I bought that guy, he was absolutely tiny when I bought him, like the size of my thumb now. Uh, so obviously he's now the male and he turned and he's now the female. Uh, they do lay eggs randomly at times on the back of the tank and various places but obviously they'll never go progress very far 
with all the other rats and that in the tank and they just get picked off and that's it really yeah yeah so up here is that um where am i there is that mxm module i was talking about and it is plugged into my dosers which sit up there because they dose the liquid food out of the fridge for me uh, and i've got a pellet feeder which goes off once a day and that's it but all the lights are always on it's just novel at the moment to not come out here and think why is that light on so yeah and I haven't actually decided whether I'm going to add any more lights. I've got kind of two sets of eight. Um, it seems, I've got a par meter and it's quite well lit, but I don't know if they grow out whether the shadings have become an issue and I might, I mean, it's quite easy to squeeze my lights on. I'll just shunt them all up on the tea site and then put some more in. I will wait and see. I mean, the way the energy costs are nowadays, uh, I don't really want to be adding any more lights at the moment, even though it's just gone down. Uh, but this guy is running, so it's trying to keep this fish room at 23, and it vents straight out. It is nice, it does keep it nice and cool in here. Um, and the tank is running at, I can check, I'm pretty sure, it starts off at about 25.8 in the morning and it gets to I'm trying to look up on the iPad. What the temperature is? Um, it is Yes, yeah, so at the moment the temperature is 26.2. So that's probably as high as it'll get. So what I tend to do is I let the temperature creep up over the summer. So we're in June, so we've got July and August. So it will probably get up to mid, mid 26s, maybe just, just under 27. Maybe it gets like super hot in July or August. And then as the winter comes around, I let it kind of come back to around 25. So it's about a two degrees swing for about 12 months. Um, which I don't mind, I mean, it's fine if it goes up, you know, gradually. I work it up from um, kind of end of April, May. I just start letting it creep up because all I do is I just set the, um, the setting on the air con. I'll just move that. Um, down basically as the temperature goes up uh, and it still lets the tank go up a little bit and then obviously in the winter I don't turn it on at all so summer actually costs more than winter to be honest because um, it costs me more to cool the fish room than it does to heat it it's very rare the heaters ever come on but that's just because of all the lights I guess right I think that's it I haven't got anything else to say no science today um, someone did say to me, why did I not put my skimmer down there on the floor? Um, main reason is I like things where I don't have to bend over to work on them. Um, and the other thing is, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure if I go back <laughs> decades to my A-level chemistry, uh, CO2 is heavy, well not heavy, but heavier and it tends to sink so if you want to suck in fresh air or good air you don't want your skimmer on the floor really so um that's i mean it sucks fresh air in anyway from the outside but the main reason i didn't put my floors because i don't want to bend over but the other reason is um i don't really want to suck in any more carbon dioxide than i need to so that is it and that is i mean that's kind of what is that chest height i suppose that cut for me so yeah works out quite well same with the calcium reactor they're all just up off the air and uh i've done anything since i've turned it on i put this on on christmas i think it was so that has been running six months and 
all I've done is change the bottle on it. Other than that, that I like things like that. It's super simple. You just turn it on. That's it. Just works. Right. So let's take that off. That sounds. And that is it. So uh, I don't know when I will make. Is that going to fall over? Aren't they? Yeah, so I don't know when I'll be making another video, to be honest. Um, they take take up a bit of time, don't they, really? So I uh, can't think of anything else to say. So MXM working really well after the horrendous start with it. Um, the tanks, yeah, it's looking good, actually. Yeah. I'm enjoying it, which is what it's all about, really. It's very easy to uh, forget <laughs> that you're getting this hobby to just uh, enjoy the tank. And it's extremely easy to just become fixated on everything that's not going the way you want it. You know, I mean, I had this tank two years, Aptasia free, now I've got Aptasia in there. Um, so, you know, that's life. I'm not gonna get a copper band in that tank, I don't think now, with all those tanks in there. Um, so I have options of uh, Aptasia eating filefish, which in the past they've mixed success with. They did eat my Aptasia, but they ate literally everything else as well, like all my soft coals, it ate my gonies, my torches, um, yeah, just ate everything really. Uh, so they didn't work. I tried burger, which I just, one, never seemed to get hold of them. Uh, in the UK, it seems to be like gold dust. Two, they cost the same amount as gold dust, they're absolute fortunes. Uh, and three, you need a lot of them, so they cost an absolute fortune, and your rats will eat 90% of them before they do the job on the Aptasia. Uh, so really, that only leaves me with the option of peppermint shrimp. So, I, I have noticed in this tank that I have little bits of rock work which are completely Aptasia free, and they are the bits of rock work where the shrimp live. So that says to me, I need to just kind of expand the numbers of shrimp um, that I've got in the tank. So they're very difficult to see. Um, but I think, I've seen three. I've, I think I put 10 in. Uh, so I don't know whether I just don't see them. I'm pretty sure well, I know for a fact that that Lenardi Rass will eat them, um, particularly when they shed, because when I had him in an observation tank, I've completely, I've, you know, and just had one of them dirt moments, um, I put him in a tank with two cleaner shrimp that I got, not cleaner shrimp, peppermint shrimp from a fellow reaper, and what I tend to do is I put them in a tank separate from the display until they shed, or until they molt, and once they molt, they can go into the display tank. Um, and what happened is it molted, and it had the Lenardi rasses in there, and he just ate it, basically. So I ended up with one, and I bought a couple the other day, which you saw down in that other tank, so they will eventually migrate up into this one. Yeah, so, but, you know, that tells you, get everywhere, don't they? Hard as nails, those things. Um, I've got respect for them, really. They are one of life survivors. Um, so, yeah, I'm not that bothered really by them. I, I don't think this is the sort of tank where they're going to be absolutely taken over. Um, yeah, so that is it really. Corals all seem to be reasonably happy and growing. Um, I'll probably go through the corals next time. I'm not good with corals, to be honest, because, well, to be fair, some of the corals you buy, they're just acros, so they're not. They don't give you any species names of them anyway. Um, and a lot of them have silly names, which I I don't really pay attention to, to be honest. Like this one here was called um, Gandalf's Staff or something. Oh, I'll turn the camera around. This one here, I mean, it's growing really well since it was, I bought it as a single tiny little nub and they called it Gandalf's I think they call it Gandalf Star or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's growing. It's got a lot of growing to do, but, you know, compared to what it was, it's growing really nicely, but um, it's just, yeah, 
I don't know what it's called. Right, where are we? 35 minutes, right, that's enough. I'm going, so hope you enjoyed it, and no idea I'm gonna be making another one. Um, yeah, I've got no idea. So just look out, and I will speak to you later. Bye.